Hey, hi, hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Train and Feed Your Tech DB. I'm Mike Thompson at CATI. I have been designing and machining parts for five years, first as a design engineer and prototyper for a mass manufacturer, and then as a freelancer for startups. I even volunteer to train folks how to do the same thing to this day. I've used three CAD platforms and at least as many CAM solutions. Before we get started, I'd like to very briefly tell you about CATI. We pride ourselves on being America's first SOLIDWORKS partner since 1992, but SOLIDWORKS is just a part of our larger mission, which is to help companies make better products through technology. We provide a full product development portfolio and the support and training to make the most of it. That includes design, simulation, manufacturing, and PLM software from Dassault System and partners, and 3D printers and scanners from Stratasys, Creaform, and others. We even provide expert consulting and service work using tools like Abacus, Katia, and the latest 3D printers so you can enjoy the benefits of all these fantastic technologies when, and only when, you need them. So with that out of the way, let's get into the meat of it. One of the things that we talk about with CamWorks is that it is a smart cam program, that it comes with a wealth of resources and all you need to do is train it a little in order to maximize how you use it. A pain point for some users is that in training, it can be easy to miss how that happens, or even some of the more advanced options to make wider changes. The special sauce that makes it all work is the Technology Database, or TechDB, and today we're going to go through making those very changes to train it. Every shop is different, and for a CAM software whose main goal is for you to click a single button and have G-code, there needs to be a little tweaking to make sure that cycle times are minimized and that the correct tools are being used. So. I'm going to show you a few things in this webcast. First, in the TechDB, I'm going to create a simple tool crib, and then I'm going to define a machine. These are critical first steps to make sure that your code is well optimized. I'm going to add a few tools to my tool crib, a large end mill, a small end mill, and a countersink. I'm then going to set up a Haas mini mill. After that, we're going to tweak our strategies. We'll talk more about operation and strategy modification inside of the TechDB interface after. So. Let's get in there. In SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to go to my tools, SOLIDWORKS CAM, and hit Technology Database. And you can see that it is launching the interface already. So I have a couple machines in here already from some of the work that I do. And something to note is that when you do something in the TechDB, if you do it in inches, you have to replicate that for metric. So you can see as I swap between my units, that not all of my machines and tool cribs are following over. So do keep that in mind. To create our tool crib though, for this particular machine, I'm going to click tool crib one, which is empty as you can see. I'm going to hit my copy button. This is the key workflow that happens inside the TechDB. You take an existing entry and you copy it to modify it for your purposes. I'll always, always, always recommend keeping the original version, even if you're only going to make totally minimal changes. So I'm going to hit edit here so I can rename this, and it's going to be named after the machine. You can name it after whatever you want, a particular location, an operator, whatever. But for me, I'm going to name it af after this machine. So over here, I can now add some tools. So I'm going to add a flat end mill. As it loads, I'm going to sort everything by the cutting diameter, which is diameter D1. The little diagram over here helps indicate. I'm gonna scroll down until I find, here we are, half inch carbide two flute. That is what I have. And I'm going to hit my copy button once again. And I'm just going to name this Shars, because that's where I'm getting it from. And what I like to do is keep a link to where I got the tool from in that vendor tab. So when I inevitably break this tool, I can just create a new one. And we can see right over here how that's been saved. So let's do the same thing for an eighth inch end mill. So here we are right here, eighth inch carbide two flute, exactly the same as the one that I have. So I'm going to hit my copy button again, and I'm going to indicate that I got this from Shars as well. And I'm just going to grab my product link and put that in my vendor description once again. I'm going to hit save. So I have those two made here and those are my flat end mills. So I'm going to start with one, which is my eighth inch. I'm going to hit select. 
I'm going to add my flat end mill again. I'm going to go and grab my half inch that I just made as well. So I'm just scrolling down. Here it is, my Shars half inch. Hit select. And I repeat the process for my countersink. So I'm going to add my countersink, which is evading me right at this moment. There we are, <laughs> hovering right over it. So, and again, I'm just going to sort it by diameter and I'm going to find my half inch 90 degree. I'm going to hit my copy button and do the same thing. Say it's from Shars, grabbing my link, hit save, and then select. So here we go. We have our three end mills here now. I'm going to hit my mill button back up here to get back in the menu. We can see that I have my new tool crib here. So let's go ahead and make our mill. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click my mill inch. I'm going to hit copy. It's going to be my Haas mini mill. My machine ID is going to be Haas one since it's my first one. And we can give it some kind of description like the operator name. I'm going to select my default post processor and I have it on good authority that the Haas VF3 post processor will work for the mini mill. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and just keep my hand real close to the e-stop while I'm using it. And under machine duty, I'm going to set it to light duty. I always like to set my machine duty a little bit lighter than I think it might be just to see if I can get a little bit more aggressive when I'm running those first programs and things like that. So we have these parts done, and now I'm just going to pull up my Haas Mini Mill web page over here with the specifications so I can go ahead and grab all the information that I need to in here. So first under horsepower, we have seven and a half horsepower. We're going to come down to our feeds and speeds. Our maximum feed rate is 500 inches per minute, which we can see down over here. Our rapids feed rate is going to be 600 inches per minute. And I'm going to be a little conservative and use 110 inches per second squared for my accelerations. And those are looking pretty good there. Now, on my table travel, we can see these right over here. I'm going to put 28 and 3 quarters up there and 12 inches in my other two axes. Scrolling down further, that sequential tool changer looks fine for this, but under tool crib, I'm going to click that drop down and select the one that I just made for the Haas mini mill. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So we've got all that done, and now we can go ahead and open up our sample part. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to open this demo part. So I'm keeping it simple here. We have a part that has a single rectangular pocket inside of there. I'm gonna pull my tab out so we can see things a little bit better. Come to my cam feature tree. I'm going to hit my define machine button in my SolidWorks cam command manager. This is all basic regular setup stuff. On my machine tab, I'm going to hit my Haas mini mill and hit select. And now you can see that it's kept all of my settings down over here. It has selected the appropriate tool crib and post processor. So things are looking pretty good there. For my stock manager, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at the default, which is just the bounding box with no offsets. It's going to be fine. And then for my coordinate system, I'm going to use a stock bounding box vertex. Hit this top middle gumball over there. I'm going to rearrange my Y axis a little bit. There we go, and flip it around, and now we can see that my X, Y, and Z positives are where I want them to be. I'm going to green check from there. So that's it, that's easy and quick set up there. So now let's go ahead and hit extract machinable features. This is using the automatic feature recognition tools in Camworks, and we can see that it has gone ahead and given us our rectangular pocket one. Now. Next to that, we can see the strategy that it's chosen. It gives us a roughing pass, a roughing pass using rest machining, and then a finishing pass. Well, let's say for my purposes that I don't want to do it that way. I want to use 
uh, let's say trochoidal machining. You know, it's really good for my tool life. It's really good for my machine wear. So that's called volume mill for cam work. So I want to use volume mill as my roughing strategy. I want to get some finishing passes in there. And let's say I just always want a 10 thou edge break on this type of thing. So I'm going to come over to my cam operations tree and I'm going to hit my two and a half axis mill operations. My operation is going to be a rough mill and I'm going to use this box right here to edit the operation on creation. Just going to make my life a little bit easier. For tool, I'm going to select my half inch flat end. And then for features, I'm going to select the automatically recognized rectangular pocket. So I'm going to green check this. Give it a moment for SolidWorks to think. There we go. So here, the big change that I want to make is in my roughing tab for the pattern. Instead of pocket out, I want to use volume mill. And we can get some additional help on our volume mill expert inside the software. I'm just going to leave it by the defaults here. I'm going to hit OK for that. And we can see that I have my rough mill one with my half inch flat end tool. If I hit my expansion, we can see that it's attached to that rectangular pocket feature. So great, let's lather, rinse, and repeat except for a finishing pass. Go for our two and a half axis mill operations. The operation is going to be a contour mill. I'm going to use my eighth inch flat end mill. And for features, it's the same thing, my rectangular pocket. Do note in the operation tab that I still have my edit operation on creation but box checked. So I'm checking that. It's going to open my operation parameters dialog once again. So here we are. Now here in the contour tab, I just wanna hit my settings button under side parameters. And I'm just going to come over to spring passes and increase it to one. I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to hit okay again. And there we go. We have our contour mill one using tool two, eighth inch flat end on that same rectangular pocket. So now let's do our edge break. We're gonna use our two and a half axis mill operations button again, leaving it on contour. This time for the tool, I'm gonna to use my half inch countersink. And the feature is once again, that rectangular pocket one. I'm green checking that, letting it think for a moment. And I'm going to tick this box right here under the contour tab that it's for chamfer machining. The length of my chamfer, I'm only going to make that 10 thou. And we can leave a 30 thou clearance between the tip and the actual edge. And that looks good to me. So let's go ahead and generate our toolpaths. It's going to think a little bit. Then let's simulate our toolpath. I'm going to set this up so that it stops at the next operation. I'm going to leave my speeds pretty high. So we have some things going here. We can move this along pretty quickly for the, for the roughing operation. You can see how that trochoidal machining is working out, and it gives us these kind of unusual looking patterns, but it maintains even tool pressure throughout. So let's go ahead and finish this up. And that is our roughing pass done. Let's slow it down a little bit more so we don't miss our contour. And there we go. If you look closely, you can see that it is making two passes per level. But things are looking pretty good. Remember that second pass is for that spring pass that we put in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just speed that up. Now I'm going to slow it down again for our edge break. All right, so all those simulated elements are done, and I'm going to use my show difference option under display options to see how things are going. And it looks like everything is within spec if we look over here. So this is telling us on a gradient how much we're over or undercutting. And besides a little bit of yellow where that edge break is because that's not modeled, we're exactly on the mark. So that's looking good. I like the way that this has come out. My lead ins are good, my lead outs are good. So I'm going to come back over to my cam feature tree. I'm going to right click rectangular pocket one. I'm going to hit save operation plan. And I'm going to create a new strategy. I'm going to call this Haas volume mill finish edge break because I'm creating it for this machine. So I'm going to green check. We have our table for create feature conditions, which is okay. 
and things are looking great. And now we can see again on our cam feature tree that the strategy for that rectangular pocket is the Haas volume mill finish edge break strategy. So that's looking great. We can even dial it in further as time goes on, adjust our step overs and things like that. And all of that is going to get recorded as long as we continue saving that operation plan. So that's looking pretty good. It's made our G code just a few clicks closer every time we use the program. Now, the big thing to note here though, is that this can be a little bit tedious, but it is probably the most natural way to achieve these goals, right? As things come up, you create the strategies for them and then you save them. I'll take you through a couple of options, however, for doing something just a little bit more high powered. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this button right over here, the default feature strategies button. So there are some existing strategies that are perfectly good inside of Camworks. They may just not be the defaults. So what we can do is we can edit or view the strategy scheme for the technology database. So that's going to be all of them. And we can click through these for their default features. So I can choose it here. So there we go. I have my Haas volume mill finish edge break. We have some similar looking things in here. So volume mill, rough rest machining finish, things like that. But we can tweak these. And we can either save them as the default, or you can do what I like to do and hit your save as button. And I would like to save this as my Haas mini mill strategy. And just whatever descriptions you want. And there, it's saved in my tech DB. I've made a new copy. I can swap between my defaults. I can swap between my Haas mini mill. So I can keep things exactly the way that I need them to. How else can we adjust things? Well, if I close this and I can hit the button right here for my technology database, we can go inside of the tech DB. We can edit plenty of things from here. For instance, let's go over to features and operations. Once again, that was in my mill section, just clicking features and operations. We can choose any feature out of this dropdown. We can choose any of the available strategies that we want to take in here, or we can use this form button to create new strategy methods. So we can use all of those to create whatever we want. We can just spend some time in the tech DB really going at it. It's as simple as writing down a couple of things and going through the different types of features that you might want to handle in a certain way. I imagine your circular and rectangular pockets may utilize similar strategies. So you can go ahead and do those. Other things we can do, say, we want to change our entry method for all of our roughing operations. We don't have plunge tooling. The default is plunge. Pre-drilling might work or even a spiral entry method will work. So let's go ahead and check out our default operation parameters section inside of our tech DB. Once we're in here, we can come down to our rough mill and we can come down and we can say, oh, my feature options, my entry is plunge. Well, let's change that over to spiral. And that looks great. We can make it a copy. We can save it. We can do whatever we need. And all of these options that we see in here are the same options that we get on the different tabs of our operation parameters dialog. It's the same thing, just the technology talking to you in a different way. So, with all of those done there, we can even set different strategy methods on different machines. So let's go ahead and take a look at our default feature strategies. We can set up different machines having different defaults. So we can say, oh, I want the Haas mini mill. That's not a default for any machine. So we can go ahead and set our machines up for our different strategies. So, that is a quick whistle-stop tour through adjusting our different strategies inside of the TechDB. But before we go, there is one more thing that I would like to show you. If you're like me and you really enjoy the SolidWorks user interface or you just don't like to get out of it if you don't have to, we can open up certain parts. For instance, the turbo encabulator. The turbo encabulator is common enough in most modern shops, 
but the unique geometry of these things demonstrates nearly every feature used for milling in Camworks. Using this single part, we can just go ahead and take a power strategy session for creating all of our operation parameters. I'm going to come over to my cam feature tree. When I just hit extract machinable features, it's going to take a while to think because of what an advanced piece of technology this truly is. But we can see that once it comes through, we have all these different types of strategies that we can utilize. And now we can come over to our operation tree and we can just create individual strategies one by one for each of those features and really make it the exact one that we're looking for. So just different ways to skin that same cat. Whichever works for you is the one that I want you to use. And I hope that that has been very helpful. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you're really enjoying our DI Month presentations, and I hope you've gotten something out of this one. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.